John's case study. John is a classic example of someone we work with here at the running school who we helped to get back to running after an injury. He came to see us after suffering from chronic lower back pain from a herniated disc as well as sciatic pain down his left leg. We started working with John after most of his symptoms had improved, but he was still experiencing lower back pain when running. During our biomechanical analysis, we looked at John's walking and running and took him through a functional movement analysis. We found John had lost fluidity in his movement, which is common with chronic pain, especially in the lower back. He had poor balance and was overusing his feet and ankles to keep him balanced rather than using the stability muscles further up the kinetic chain around his core and hips. His interaction with the ground was slow, resulting in slow footwork and poor coordination. John had been unable to run and maintain his fitness since his injury, which meant he was getting out of breath easily. Although John no longer had pain when walking, he still maintained some compensations as if he had. He was walking with a very stiff upper body and not swinging his arms at all, which is common when someone is trying to protect their back and minimize pain. This is in part due to having experienced pain for a long period, but also because he hadn't trained himself out of these movement patterns. John was also locking out his knees when walking, which is indicative of someone overusing their quads and hip flexor muscles to pull themselves forward, rather than using the posterior chain to effectively propel themselves forward. It was a similar story to John's running technique. He was what we call a shuffle runner, spending a long time on the ground and keeping his feet close to the floor. His arms did very little to help propel him forward, which led to twisting his torso. He was also shifting his weight to his left side slightly. Before we could start to work with John to improve his running, we needed to improve the efficiency of his walking as well as build up his strength and fitness. The first six weeks of John's time at the running school were used to improve John's walking gait, as well as work on the strength and activation of the muscles we use a lot when running efficiently, namely the core, glutes and hamstrings. We used a combination of strength, activation and mobility exercises and walking re-education coaching to achieve this. We then moved on to focus more on his running technique. We worked on increasing flight time as he was spending a long time on the floor creating a lighter and less impactful feeling when running. This was achieved by utilizing his posterior chain and reducing his own stride. We also got John using his arms to help propel him, rather than using them just as a balancing tool. John was able to make the changes quickly, easily, and with no pain after completing his rehab strength sessions. By the end of the sessions, not only was John running better, faster and pain-free, but he was also fitter, stronger and moving better. Great work, John. Keep up the good work.